Dreamcast had plenty of great games, but to determine which ones have aged the best, we have to factor in more than just graphics. We also have to consider art style, since realism may actually be more of a detriment as a game starts to age. I had to curate my list very carefully to ensure that only the most graphically impressive games made the cut, so sit back and relax. Then get angry and type furiously in the comments section as you describe why I got everything wrong. I welcome the engagement. Taxi! You better pick someone up or hey, you're gonna run in. out of time! Yeah, go to the department All store! Alright, let's go! In Crazy Taxi 2, you race against the clock to take passengers to their destinations. The point is to make as much money in your allotted time as humanly possible, and this means you'll be driving like a maniac to become successful. You could pick up more than one passenger, and doing certain moves like jumping over obstacles increase the tips players received. The music is probably the best part of the game, featuring the offspring and methods of mayhem. For copyright reasons I had to mute it unfortunately. Land one, hey! Project Justice, also known as Rival Schools 2, is a criminally underrated fighting game made by Capcom. The point is to assemble three playable characters and fight against rival teams or schools. Although it was released on arcade, Rival Schools 2 is a console exclusive. In my opinion, there's only two 3D fighting games that look better on Dreamcast, and I'm sure you won't be surprised when you see them. Sports games usually don't age very well, but Virtual Tennis easily bucks that trend. It could be because the gameplay is so elegant and simple. That doesn't mean it's easy though. Opponents are extremely hard to beat, and they can adapt quickly to any strategy. Like so many games in the Dreamcast catalog, Virtual Tennis 2 started out on arcade machines before getting ported to the Dreamcast. Sturmwind's development is interesting because it was released in 2013 as an exclusive for the Dreamcast. That's 12 years after the console was discontinued by Sega. As a result, the studio making the game was responsible for one of the best shoot maps on the console. I don't know if it's as good as Ikaruga or Zero Gunner, but it certainly looks way better. Like I said, the older a game gets, the more important its art style becomes. Hydro Thunder is blessed with clean, colorful graphics that easily stand up to time. It didn't aim to be super realistic and that's its strength. While the game was also released on the PlayStation, this is the definitive version of Hydro Thunder. The graphics look next-gen on Dreamcast. Some of you may not know this, but the Dreamcast had several good flight simulators, and Aero Wings 2 had the best visuals, in my humble opinion. It moved away from aerial stunts like its predecessor, focusing instead on combat training. What I personally like is how easy it is to get into flight. The controls do not overwhelm you like some flight simulators do, and fighting other planes are surprisingly fun. First released in Japanese arcades in 2000, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 received several ports to consoles, including the Dreamcast. It introduced 3D backgrounds and visual effects into the series, although character models were still sprites like the previous game. This is considered one of the best fighting games of all time, but my list is more concerned with graphical presentation, so there is one 2D fighting game I must place higher. <laughs> When it comes to platformers, there wasn't much competition on Dreamcast. Apart from the Sonic games, only Rayman stood out as memorable. Its cartoony art style really helps to make it one of the best looking games on the platform. Incidentally, the Dreamcast version is considered the best version of the game, at least when we exclude Rayman Revolution for PS2. That version has different level design however, so it's hard to use as comparison to the others. Hmm? 
As far as I know, The King of Fighters 99 was the last American release on Dreamcast. The sequels were Japan only. Even so, it hits Marvel vs. Capcom 2 out of the park with its gorgeous graphics. The game is best played on Dreamcast and PC because of enhanced backgrounds and shorter loading times. Beyond these walls lay the pillars of Nosgoth, the seat of Kane's empire. How humble it now appeared, collapsing into the dust of its former magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. Soul Reaver was one of the most impressive games on PlayStation, and on Dreamcast it was incomparable. The developers took what had worked and then overhauled the graphics completely. Getting such a belated port seemed to help the Dreamcast version, because it even overshadowed the PC version. The combat isn't special, but I do like the variety of finishing moves. Controls feel especially responsive for such an old game, so I would recommend that you give it a try. Get ready, <laughs> Dead or Alive 2 made its debut on arcade machines in 1999 and a year later found its way on Dreamcast. The game was notable for improving and popularizing the concept of multi-tiered environments. So you could knock opponents off cliffs, for example, then jump down and keep fighting them down below. It's a very neat combat system, and the great graphics serve as a nice cherry on a great cake. This is a superb fighting game. Jet Grind Radio was the first game ever to use cel-shaded graphics. This might explain why it still looks so fresh after more than 20 years. While not open world in design, players get to skate in large areas within Tokyo and New York. The point of the game is to spray over the graffiti of rival gangs, who are also trying the same against you. When you add the overzealous police, things become very challenging. Shenmue is easily the most ambitious game on Dreamcast. It actually started out as a virtual fighter RPG before Sega decided to scrap it and make an original game from scratch. Amazingly, every NPC has their own schedule and this really helps to make the open world more believable. As impressive as it was for the time, there's no denying that models and textures have started to age. It's most conspicuous with facial animations which look rather primitive by today's standards. Still, Shenmue pioneered open-world games with its interactive design and set the standard moving forward. Why not just use my plane, the Tornado? Thanks, but you gotta check out my newest power supply. Ta-da! Normally, I would lump games of the same series together, but Sonic Adventure wasn't nearly as graphically impressive as its sequel. It makes sense, given the time between release. The first game was a launch title for the Dreamcast, while Sonic Adventure 2 came out three years later. Shadow the Hedgehog made his debut in Sonic Adventure 2, and he would go on to have recurring roles in other Sonic games. The first game has better levels in my opinion, but both games are awesome. Also try the GameCube versions. They are fine, but most people prefer them on Dreamcast. Nobody should be surprised by my number one pick. Soul Calibur may have been a launch title for the Dreamcast, but nothing came close to beating it on the console, at least not in terms of presentation. Even to this day, it's still many people's favorite in the series, and that says a lot about its quality as a fighting game. But that's it for this video I'm afraid. If you found it useful, please give a like because it helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.